for eating sugar. No way. Ah, sugar makes our kids hyper. It's a scientific fact. But kids are fighting back. They had Halloween when they were kids. Why can't we? Scientific fact? Huh? Like TV rots your brain? Today, as lawmakers consider a national ban on Halloween, they hear from both sides of the debate. Before we begin today's hearing, some ground rules. No yelling, no threats of punishment, and no candy. No candy? I guess we know what side no you're on. No respect, young man, or it's no, no candy. candy. You're just mad because no you're old. Candy. Your oh, order. Your right order. Aren't you? Order. Excuse me. Somebody sent me a text? Since guesswork and finger pointing didn't get us anywhere, let's turn the floor over to an expert. Expert? I'm not an expert. This issue needs a reasoned scientific study, and Mosa Mack has done some solid work before. She's just the person for the job. But... Mosa, you are hereby commissioned by Congress to get to the bottom of this question once and for all. Wait a minute, Senator. There's some mistake. Does sugar make kids hyperactive? I'm not a scientist. I'm just a teenager. We'll reconvene in six weeks to hear your results and vote on the ban. Hearing adjourned. Does sugar make kids hyper? Well, you guys aren't kids, but you're all I've got. Mm, um, T minus 10 seconds until candy consumption. Dibs on the fireballs. Seven, six, five. Stop counting, Billy. I need to see how you act before you eat the sugar. Mm, sugar. Tell us you're drooling. You guys are both acting hyper and you haven't even. Candy! Candy! This can't be the way to see if sugar makes kids hyper. I have to see how experts do it. There must be a million scientific studies in here. I'm sure you'll find the answer to your question at least one of them. So far, no. But look, on almost all of these studies, there are multiple authors, sometimes over 20. I need a collaborator. What do you call us? OK, another collaborator. Before we begin, some background. Too much sugar increases the risk of heart disease, obesity, and diabetes. We've got lots of research that shows all that to be true. But that's not what our study is about. Does sugar cause hyperactivity? Has anyone studied this question before? Not exactly, but I found a study on sugar in mice and a study on sugar in sleep. Good work. We can build on those in our study. Our study! Our very own study! Before we begin, we should research. We'll find out as much as we can about similar experiments done in the past. Research includes gathering observations, too. I'll prove it! Sweet stuff makes me hyper! Video evidence. They're out of control. Halloween candy crazy! Now that we've done some research, let's make an educated guess. What do you think our experiment will prove? Among children ages 8 to 12, diets high in refined sugar lead to behavior associated with hyperactivity. Sparknotes version, sugar makes kids hyper. And after our experiment, we'll either accept or reject that guess. So, we're asking, does sugar cause hyperactivity? Is hyperactivity an effect of sugar? In science, cause and effect are called variables. The effect variable depends on the cause variable, so we call it a dependent variable. Hyperactivity depends on sugar, so that's a dependent variable? Which would make sugar our cause variable. The independent variable? Precisely! Oh, dependent, independent, you're losing me with all these words, Doc! Think of it this way. The dependent variable is the one we're measuring, the variable we're looking at very closely to see if and how it changes. So, without rereading the last page, which variable are we measuring? Sugar or the symptoms of hyperactivity? 
Sugar, of course, like you measure sugar when you're baking brownies. Good guess, but we're not baking. And why not? We're measuring symptoms of hyperactivity. That's what we're looking for. More examples, anyone? Just banging my head against the wall cause pain. Does doing nothing impact my happiness? Does the mere thought of brownies Ooh, make me hungry? I think you've got it. So how do we measure our dependent variable? How do we show that hyperactivity is caused by or dependent on sugar? Easy. Give a kid a bunch of candy and watch him go nuts. Actually, you may be onto something. But hang on. What if before we give them sugar, they had a soda with caffeine in it? Or what if they'd just been playing with other kids? Or right after we give them the sugar, they're going to see Star Wars? I'm only a squirrel, but just thinking about those things makes me excited. Those all could be the cause or the independent variable, and they could really mess up our experiment. You're right. We need to get all those things out of our way. So the only possible cause we're looking at is sugar. In every scientific experiment, there can only be one independent variable. So take away soda, playtime, and Star Wars? Not so easy. And it seems like there could be a million other things that might make a difference, too. Can we really get rid of them all? If they're anything like ants at a picnic, we can't get rid of them. But we can control them! I like how you think, Billy. We can't get rid of all the variables in an experiment. But we can keep them under control, which is why they're called controlled variables. But how do we do that? Maybe. If we had two kids, not one, we could control those variables by making them the same for both kids. Same playtime, same Star Wars, and probably no soda for either. Two kids? That sounds like more work. The only thing we're changing is our independent variable, sugar. One lucky kid gets it, and one sad kid doesn't. I think you're on to something, Mosa, but Will two kids be enough? What if our sugar kid has a weird allergy to sugar? Or what if our non-sugared kid is just naturally more excitable, like your little squirrel friend? That would pretty much spell disaster. So maybe two groups of kids. So if we have one or two weird cases, we still have the overall group to look at. And how many kids in each group? Any more than three, and I'm out. Is three big enough? We're looking for an answer about kids in general. Then there's only one solution. We must test every child between 8 and 12 in the entire world. Ideally, yes. But we need a number we can actually work with. 50 in each group. How are we going to control everything that 100 kids do and eat all day long? Hmm. When you put it that way, it sounds a lot like... Summer camp, two identical four-week sleepaway camps, same schedule, same activities, even the food looks exactly the same too. But that's just the label. One camp's meal plan is high in refined sugar. The other camp gets a sugar substitute. Sweet, but not sugar. And the kids don't know the difference. So, now we need to look for the effect, right? How do we do that? We test both groups at the beginning of camp then before and after each meal, and then at the end of camp for symptoms of hyperactivity. What kind of tests? Tests developed by scientists before us. Tests that look at attention, mood, coordination, all kinds of stuff. I gotta tell you, Mosa, if I was a Twin Lakes camper, all this testing would definitely get me anxious, or mad, or both. The kids barely even notice. It's all just camp stuff to them. Cheater in North Camp! We found three sugar-coated gummies in the pocket of his shorts. 
didn't even know they were even there, I promise. I called his mother and confirmed his story. Apparently, she put the cats in his shorts as a secret surprise. She promises there were only three cats. Is this going to ruin our experiment? Not at all. No problems with any of the other 99 kids. Though, to be safe, we should cut this one from our final data. I'll need to retain the evidence, of course. Now we've got to analyze. Skyscrapers of information. Uh, wake me up when this nightmare is over. Don't worry. We recorded our data very carefully, which means it will be so much easier to make sense of. Mood. No big difference here. Or here either. Hmm. So it looks like... With the future of Halloween in the balance, tonight, Congress and the nation will hear the scientific truth. Does sugar make kids hyper? Do they give us four Nobel Prizes, or do we have to share one? Oh, feeling faith. Neat gummy cat. Take it away, Mosa. What did we conclude? And so, after a four-week study of 99 children, age 8 to 12, our results indicate that our hypothesis is...